Greetings, guys. Let's talk the 2024 election. As you know, tomorrow is election day, so don't forget to show up to vote. But anywho, um, here's my final pred prediction. The Dems will probably take around 319 to 219. Nevada's is lean, lean blue. Arizona is really, really low lean or tilt. Wisconsin is lean blue. Michigan is likely blue. Pennsylvania is likely blue. North Carolina is a very soft lean. Same with Georgia. If there's going to be any surprises in this election, it's going to be here, 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 or here. Um, the polls in Ohio, Iowa, Texas, and Florida are very, very low margins. So it's very possible that there might be a surprise there. Of course, Nebraska's, Nebraska's second district, Omaha, is probably pretty safe. And upstate Maine is probably safe red. The election will very likely be decided in a handful of counties. So I'm going to switch to the county by county map to show you. This is a 2020 election uh, by congressional district in Michigan. You can see Detroit, suburban Detroit. Yeah, that's going suburban Detroit. Turnout there will affect the election. Saginaw, Flint, Lansing, Grand Rapids, and Kalamazoo. A lot will depend on voters in those states and how much they turn out. Because higher turnout in all of those and the Dems win, low turnout and it's possible and the election is in a bad spot. This is Wisconsin. A lot will depend on Green Bay County, which was flipped. Milwaukee. M Madison around here. And the Wow counties. Madison is progressive and turnout there will affect the results. Milwaukee County will affect the results. Green Bay. Trump flipped Green Bay and carried the election in 16, so that's important. The Wow counties here, Wakusa, Oshkosh maybe in the other one, just direct, just directly south of Milwaukee, suburban Milwaukee. Now those have been very red for a long time, so the suburban shift to the Dems hasn't really taken hold yet. But keep in mind, winning the election by a handful of votes is just as good as winning the election by a huge landslide, at least in these counties. So if the margin increases for the Dems, which it probably will, well then, then Wisconsin's pretty safe. So in Georgia, um, sorry, I'm scrolling down. So in Georgia, you can see if this similar map plays out Harris could win Georgia, but it's going to be a slog. So suburban Atlanta, carrying Macon, Savannah, you know, Augusta, Athens, these blue splotches. Oh, if the African American and and Asian voters in at, suburban Atlanta turn out the election's probably pretty good. Another possible surprise is Texas. Turnout has been incredibly high this year. Like, really, really high. So if there's a surprise in the election, it could be here. A lot will depend on what turnout is looking like in Harris, Travis County, Bear County, El Paso area. And this is a previous map for when Beto O'Rourke won. So if Austin, Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, this area and this area turn out, if there's a surprise in, there's a surprise in Texas, it's gonna be there. For Arizona, basically it will all come down to turnout in Tucson here 
and turn out in Maricopa. Most of the population of Arizona lives in Maricopa County, which for a long time, Phoenix was red. So if Harris can hold Maricopa County, he, uh, she can win the state of Florida or not Florida, Arizona. For Nevada, it will come down to Washu County here, home of Carson City, and here, Las Ve Greater Las Vegas. If they can keep both of these, you can keep the state of Nevada. And the other thing is, if there's a surprise, there might also be a surprise. There might also be a surprise in like in Ohio or Iowa. Like we can see here that despite Ohio becoming redder, it's not that it's not that red. Yeah, eight points is a lot, but if turnout's higher in the cities and in Northeast Ohio, it's a pos it's possibly winnable. Additionally, Iowa, despite being, despite Trump carrying Iowa by over 100,000 votes, the polls are behaving weirdly this time. This is, about flooding the zone, how Republicans have bought a bunch of shitty polls to tell them they're ahead. So, on election night, you want to watch the turnout in all those cities I mentioned. How, how, are, how is the election looking in suburban Detroit or in, or in Milwaukee or Milwaukee suburbs or Madison or Phoenix, or Las Vegas, or Texas, or Florida, or Ohio, or Iowa, Pennsylvania. As you can see, this is a early voting. 77 million, this might be a new record early voting turnout. You can also compare it to this, the number requested. Although the number requested actually excludes states in which mail-in ballots are automatically shipped to everyone. Why don't we start with the governor race, the governors. So Washington is obviously safe. North Carolina, the Republican candidate they chose was very, very shitty and he's bringing it down. Of course, uh, Delaware, New Hampshire's a toss up, everything else is red. For the state senate, there's a lot of gerrymandered state senates, particularly like Wisconsin or Arizona or PA or North Carolina. So like, there's probably not going to be that many changes in the state senate. Basically, uh, gerrymandering in some of these states by previous Republican governors have basically ensured that nothing is really going to change. Although Alaska might, although early results from Alaska suggest that there might, that something might be happening there. State House, State House projections, very similar. Oh, this should probably be safer. So yeah, very little changes. Pennsylvania and Michigan are pretty toss up. Same with New Hampshire, Arizona, Nevada. For the Senate, the interesting thing is so the Dems are up in Nevada and Arizona. Now, I think they'll probably. 
and Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and PA. I think they'll probably lo lose or only narrowly hold Montana, so I'm going to move this into a last-minute toss-up. But the interesting thing is that the race is more or less tied in Texas. Now, Colin Allred has ran a really good campaign, and a lot of polls right now have him effectively tied or up by one. So it's very possible that Texas could deliver a 50-50 Senate. And then you also have Nebraska, where the independent Democrat, independent candidate, because, well, they're not running a Democrat, they're running an independent who would caucus with the Dems. Um, is doing pretty well, so I think it's very possible that it'll be it'll be between forty nine and fifty two more or less. So we got that. So Iowa's cities, it a lot will really depend on what are the turnout in Iowa's cities. Are we talking? Are we talking higher than expected? Are we talking like Obama level mobilization? Because we have to remember that Obama won Iowa two times in a row. So, and the thing is like, Trump really needs to win every single swing state to really, like if we just, let's say we take all these out and make it more or less just a swing, just like a swing. Just like, we'll take all the ones off the board. Like, if we take... The thing is, the polls in North Carolina are also more or less tied, although a lot of the new, the last batch of polls have the Dems up at up two points. So, like, if we take the, all of the swing states off the board, we're at this, 226 to 229. So, if the Dems carry Michigan, Wisconsin, or PA, we can scroll down to all the options in which you can win. The Dems have 20 winning combinations, and the Republicans have 21 winning combinations. So the election is going to be tight, honestly, and turnout's going to be high because we already have really high turnout figures. And if we we can also look at the house districts to essentially determine to determine well how the night is looking. So the first one worth mentioning is this one. Washington's first, straddling the Columbia with Vancouver and stuff, this leaned blue and flipped blue. Then we have this one, Oregon's new congressional district. These along the Central Valley, a bunch of ones, Daryl Isaac, Cal 41, Cal 45, then this one is kind of shocking. Kansas second, it got really, really close last election night and it might be a toss up. Then we have Nebraska second. Let's, the thing is Don Bacon, his predecessor got busted in a corruption scandal. So there might be something there. Then we've got Oklahoma fifth. It used to be literally just Oklahoma city and it was picked up by the Dems, but then they gerrymandered it. So the polls in this Oklahoma fifth are more or less tied. Then we have Iowa's first, Iowa's second, pretty much this chunk of Iowa because the both of those were won by a handful of votes, less than a thousand. Of course, these Michigan districts here along the center Main second, the Dem has been holding on for a while. 
in Pennsylvania for the presidential election. We're talking to Collar County, surrounding PA, surrounding Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Lackawanna County, home of Scranton, and Erie, Erie County. In North Carolina, it's going to come down to the Research Triangle and turn out in Charlotte, Asheville, that area. Another thing to watch is Alaska's at-large at large house seat. The Dems won it because of the new ranked choice voting system in which people really hated Sarah Palin more, so she lost the race and the election. But right now, Pol Mary Pelota is looking... Patola, Peltola is looking in a really good spot. Of course, Arizona 6, that flipped by a handful of votes. Yeah, so that is the election. So, California is 40, 45th. 46th, 40th, and 49th will also be important. Basically, look at the Orange County districts because those are suburban, gradually shifting towards the Dems, and, and they could, where they are on election night will really give you a good idea of where things are. So to sum this up, the election is going to depend on turn Milwaukee, Green Bay, Milwaukee suburbs, Madison, Detro Detroit and its suburbs, Macomb County, Oklahoma, Oakland County, Lansing, Flint, Grand Rapids, going over, the Collar Counties, P Philadelphia Suburbs, Pittsburgh, Erie County, Lackawanna, i.e. Scranton, heading down the, the Tri-Cities, Asheville, Charlotte, that area around North Carolina, suburban Atlanta, how turnout is it in Makeup, Macon, and Athens, Headed over what turnout's looking like in Florida. If you look at the map, if we pull up the map again for early votes, we can see that the early vote counts are really high this year. We have a whole heck of a lot of early of early early vote counts. Like, let's just zoom in on a random state, Texas. Almost 9 million early votes. 50% red, 37, 13. 8 million in Florida. 44, 33, 23. 2 million. 啊,所以我們pulled so that is the election. It's going to be very narrow and it's going to depend on a handful of swing counties and swing cities as it always does in a handful of swing states. 
I'm also going to, before I finish the prediction, I'm going to check how many people vote on election day just for contacts. The other thing is I, I've collected a lot of anecdotal evidence online of areas where you would expect Trump signs, a lot of rural areas where all of a sudden the signs have disappeared, as well as people who are saying that they're voting for the opposite party. So I suspect that there's a lot of surprises there. Also keep in fact, keep, also keep in mind Also keep in mind another thing is that is that in some counties there are no Democrats running for office, so you have to register with the Republican Party to even be able to vote in your county. Also, turnout is probably going to be high as well because there's a lot of Trump voters who are very anxious to show up. And there's also a lot of pissed off voters on the other side who are anxious to show up as well. So I suspect there's going to be a, a lot more votes. And I'll keep monitoring the situation. And another thing to note is that with high turnout, I think it's going to take a week to call some of the swing states. So, I wish you a happy election. Don't forget to vote. And like, comment, and subscribe. This is Sean Hartnett. Bye.